feel that. There's a certain feeling in the air this time of year. It's like, like magic. Everywhere you look could be a picture on a Christmas card. The lights, the snow, the families in matching sweaters. <laughs> it's my favorite time of year, I can tell you that right now. And this Christmas is shaping up to be a magical one too. Almost as magical as Holly's. Wait, what? You, you haven't heard about Holly's Christmas. Well, buckle in because I have a story for you. Our story actually begins last year. On Christmas Eve, Holly's house was full of friends and family, laughing, eating, exchanging gifts. It was a perfect night. The snow had cleared, and Holly and her grandmother were sitting beside the hearth, looking at the stars through the window. <laughs> All right, are you ready? What's that one called, Holly? Ursa Major. And that one? Beetlejuice. No, no. Cassiopeia. Right again. I can't believe how many of these you know. Well, I did skip the fourth grade, you know. Hey, was that a shooting star? That wasn't just a shooting star. That was the Christmas star. Make a wish. Hmm. Let me think. Ah. I know. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Chapter 1 Through the Archway. A lot has happened since last Christmas. Lost teeth, birthday parties, summer camp. So it shouldn't come as a surprise when I tell you that Holly had forgotten the wish she'd made last year and had a new one in mind. I wish we could be spending Christmas in Florida like Madison's family. You know, Madison from my class? Well, her parents are taking her to Orlando and they're going to go to Disney and they're actually going to be there on Christmas Day with the fireworks and everything. But instead, we're stuck here. Same old Christmas. Grandma's not even coming. We've been over this, Holly. Not this year. Why not? If it's because you turned the spare room into an office, she can sleep in Jeremy's bed, and Jeremy can sleep in the snow fort in the backyard. Hey, Mom! Holly? I just don't get why she came last year, but she can't this year. Is she busy performing her music or something? Sometimes these things just don't work out, okay? Holly could tell her mother was upset for some reason. But then again, her mom was always a little cranky at this time of year. Maybe some decorations would help. After all, it was well into December. And aside from the single strand of lights on the house, you could barely tell what time of year it was. So up, up, up into the attic went Holly to retrieve a very special box. Now, where did they... Ah, here they are. All neat and... <coughs> dusty. Very, very dusty. She began digging through the decorations. She found all of her favorites. The paw-shaped stocking for the dog, the Christmas Village miniatures, the off-brand blow-up reindeer with the glowing green nose. Wait, what's this? It was a small box. And when Holly blew the dust away, it shined and sparkled. She was confused. The dust made it seem pretty old, but the box looked almost brand new. Inside was a tin soldier ornament with glossy black boots, a tall, shiny helmet, and a left arm that was ever so slightly crooked. It wasn't what she was looking for, but it looked special, so she carefully packed it away and made a mental note to ask her mom about it later. Then she spotted what she had come up for, a box labeled Christmas Mugs. <laughs> the simplest decoration of all. You just have to put them up in the cupboard and BAM! Next time you have a craving for hot cocoa, a festive mug would instantly get you in the holiday mood. And there was one in particular that was her mother's favorite. It has a picture of a toad in a Santa hat. And in big green letters, it says, Mistletoad. Just need, just need to reach all the way to the bottom for mom's mug. Ooh. Holly fell head first into the box, 
and where she was expecting to hear the clinking of mugs, instead, she heard air whooshing past her ears as she fell deeper and deeper and deeper into the box. Until finally, No? Now, any other child would have been scared, but not Holly. She was at the end of a street in a small village covered in snow. Cozy storefronts lined the cobbled road, and gas street lamps flickered all along the way. A wreath hung on every one. At the top of the street, a giant, glowing Christmas tree sat in a large town square. And beyond that was a huge castle. And in front of Holly stood a large candy cane with a name tag that read Cornelius. Hello, welcome to Tinseltown. Huh, weird, it's stopped snowing, strange. No, oh, 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 I'm sorry, my name is Cornelius. Uh, what, what, what kind of decoration are you? I'm not a decoration? Oh, of course, of course. So some sort of a uh, toy then, no? Woodland? Woodland creature? Oddly, oddly dressed elf? Are you, you're not a, you're not a ham. You're not a ham, are you? Um, I'm Holly. I'm eight years old and I got to skip the fourth grade and I'm a human. What is this place? A Christmas land, of course. The place where it's Christmas every day. But more specifically, we are in Tinseltown. My hometown, home of the tinsel, go Yetis. Whoa, sorry, it, it's been a while since a human has come through. I can't quite remember the protocol. That's okay. Well, it was really nice to meet you, Cornelius, but I really got to go home. All right, we'll just uh, wait until it starts snowing in the archway and you can go on through. And how long does that take? Because it's not snowing in there now. Um, well, I uh, honestly, it's, um... Yeah, it's never stopped before, what? so... Cornelius, that can't be good. Lucky for us, I've watched a lot of videos about fixing things, so it shouldn't be too hard. I just watched one about fixing our washing machine, so I just need to find the valve and um, shut off the water. And, uh, okay, I don't think that's going to help us here. They stood for a moment, confused. The archway towered over them, made of bricks of glowing ice. Like the box in the attic, it was old and worn, but still sparkled in the daylight. Before too long, a small, grouchy-looking elf, wearing a sweater covered in music notes, came huffing and puffing down the street. What is the meaning of this? I was just in rehearsal with the snowman choir when one of them tells me to look out the window because the archway isn't working? Cornelius, I got you this job out of the goodness of my heart. Don't tell me that you've already found some way of ruining it! Er, uh, hello, conductor. This is Holly, the, um, human. A human? How? What? You... Ma'am, are you not a resident of Christmasland? You cannot be here. Oh, this is bad. <laughs> but... Luckily, in addition to being the choir conductor, I am also a volunteer joy and peacekeeper. A what? Oh, for eggnog's sake, it's like a sheriff. Uh, well, maybe you should just say sheriff from now on, so it's not so confusing. Ugh, stop trying to distract me. As a joy and peacekeeper, I am taking both of you in for questioning. I told you, I don't know what's going on here. Conductor, aren't you supposed to be in rehearsal? Yeti twins, what's happening here? Oh yeah, ma'am. They stormed out of there right quick. They keep cutting into our practice time with their figure skating. It's not cool. Hey, uh, the, the queen's coming. She'll know what to do. Hey, queen, over here. No, absolutely not. I can deal with this on my own. I command you to come with me. The conductor led them away from the archway to the next street. It looked like a movie set. Reindeer strolled from shop to shop, loaded down with shopping bags. There were Christmas lights on every storefront, and perfect curls of smoke rose from every chimney. The smell of peppermint filled the air, but the conductor was pushing past all of that, walking behind Cornelius and Holly, poking them with an icicle. Hey, no, Ow, wait, conductor. what are you doing? Keep oh. moving. So, Cornelius, Tinseltown, is this where Santa lives? 
Uh, Santa lives at the North Pole, so... Oh, duh. But he does have a timeshare here. I knew it! I said shh! They rounded the corner to another quieter street lined with homes. The conductor led them into a small cottage. Right this way. To the Joy and Peacekeeper's interrogation room. Um, this just looks like a dining room in someone's house. Your house, right? No, this is the Joy and Peacekeeper's interrogation room, like I said. Then why is there a picture of you on vacation hanging on the wall? And is that you with... Oh my goodness, that's your mom. It is his mom. I know, I know her. I saw her. Enough! I am supposed to be the one interrogating you. Here are the facts. One minute, the archway is working. And the next, nothing. Not only that, but this intruder also showed up unannounced. Cornelius. Holly, what have you done? Well, it's like I was trying to tell you. One second I was at home, the next second I was falling, and then it was here. Lies! She's not lying, Conductor. That's all there is to it. People don't just appear out of thin air. I mean, when they come through the archway, they... They, li- they literally do, so... Oh! I know something fishy is going on here. I mean, it never stopped snowing here. Till now, she's got to be behind this. I'm not, I promise. Oh, I will get to the bottom of this. And I swear on my joy in Peacekeeper's badge that I will be the one to restore Christmas Land to its traditional holiday glory. What is that sound? Now announcing Her Majesty, the Queen of Christmas Land! Four elves in uniforms burst through the door, followed by the Queen, a polar bear, and the most elegant polar bear Holly had ever seen. She wore a deep red robe and a golden crown. Conductor, what is the meaning of this? I swear I saw you in the street just a moment ago. Oh, holy sprinkles. Is this a guest? Tell me, my dear, what is your name? Uh, Holly. Er, Holly, your highness. Please, please, please don't eat me. Holly, you have a familiar look about you, my dear. Have we met before? Hmm. Well, I was a mouse in the third grade pageant. Did you see that? No, I'm afraid not. Don't know what to tell you then. Well, I digress. Conductor, you cannot just detain people. The Christmas Council will take care of that. So then what are the Joy and Peacekeepers for? Keeping an eye out for litterbugs, helping sweet old penguins cross the street, that kind of thing. But definitely not detaining people. (laughs) What's the point of... What was that? Nothing, Your Highness. Right you are, Conductor. Now, Holly and Cornelius, you can come with me. And Conductor, please, no more hostages. Yes, Your Highness. The Queen led Holly and Cornelius back to the town square, which was packed with people who had gathered to admire the tree. Holly glanced up at the castle, studying the beautiful, ornate stained glass windows. Hey, Cornelius, the reindeer in that stained glass window kind of looks like my dog. And the woman in that one with the Christmas pageant, she looks just like my grandma. Whoa, and the abominable snowman in that huge one looks exactly like my brother. They're really amazing, aren't they? Speaking of amazing, take a look at that tree. It's, It's incredible, your majesty. Every year you just outdo yourself. It is, isn't it? Some of my best work yet, if I do say so myself. Check out that star. Star. Star? Star! Wait, Cornelius, your majesty, I made a wish on the Christmas star. I wished for Christmas every day. Do you think that could be why I fell through the archway? Perhaps. Wish magic is a tricky thing. Even I only know a bit about it, and I'm considered something of an expert on the topic. But if the star you wished upon really was the Christmas star, well... Out of my way... Cut that out right now. The Christmas star is a myth, and you know it. Excuse me, sir, but please do not address the queen like that. Okay, but it is time for the human to leave. I've just come from the archway, and it's finally working again, so she needs to go before anything else goes wrong. Oh, don't listen to him, Holly. 
none of this is your fault. I'm sure your being here is just a fluke. You'll pass back through that archway, your life will go back to normal, and so will ours. It's been a pleasure to meet you, though, but I think I hear your mother calling. Holly! Holly, where are you? Holly had a million questions for the queen, but she knew it was time to leave. She looked to the archway, where snow was now swirling inside. Merry Christmas, Holly! Merry Christmas! And goodbye, Holly the human. Merry Christmas! Hello, boxes. Hello, decorations. Hello, <coughs> dust. Holly, you need any help up there? No, got it, Mom. I'm sorry, I was up there for so long, it took forever to find what I was looking for. And then I got distracted and I got sucked in and then there was this big candy cane and there Holly. was- <laughs> What an imagination you have. I used to be just like you. Hey, it's not just my imagination. This really happened. You were only up there two minutes, maybe three tops. Is everything okay? What are you hiding behind your back? I just thought maybe it might make you feel better to have some hot cocoa from our favorite Christmas mugs. Yes, please. I'll heat up the stove. And so they sat, mother and daughter, sipping hot cocoa while snow began to fall outside. Mom... Maybe we could go get a tree tomorrow? That sounds like a great idea, honey. Can we put that tin soldier ornament on it? Tin soldier? Yeah, with the glossy black boots, the tall shiny helmet, and the crooked left arm. We don't use that one, Holly. But why not? Because what? we don't. I'm sorry. It, I'm sorry. It's just old. Why don't you go find your brother? I think he wanted some help making his card to mail to Grandma. And with the events of the day slipping from her mind, Holly and Jeremy got to work, cutting up Christmas catalogs to decorate their cards for their grandmother. But up in the attic, Holly's mother was all alone, sitting cross-legged on the floor with a small shiny box in her lap, a box that had earlier that day been covered in dust. It housed the tin soldier ornament with glossy black boots, a tall shiny helmet, and a left arm that was ever so slightly crooked. She turned the tin soldier ornament over, revealing the logo on the back, made in the USA by the Remington Toy Company. And meanwhile, in Christmas Land. Conductor, what business do you bring before the Christmas Council today? Council Snowman Frost? A human appeared in Christmas Land today, and strange things started happening. I'd bet the last treat in my advent calendar that she'll be back, and things are only going to get worse for us. Council Snowman Frost, Jackie, please. Christmas land could be ruined forever. Interesting. And what do you propose we do about it? I have some ideas. But the conductor wasn't the only person wondering what to do next. Back in the town square, the queen was standing in front of the Christmas tree, staring at a small ornament. Why was Holly sent here? What is happening in the human world? Oh, Remington, please wake up. I need to get to the bottom of this. That ornament was a small tin soldier with glossy black boots, a tall shiny helmet, and a slightly crooked left arm. Thank you so much for listening to Welcome to Tinseltown. The story doesn't end here, though. Continue on to the next episode to find out what's in store. Tinseltonians, thank you so much for tuning in. To get a little sentimental, we've worked very hard on this series, and we really hope we brought a little bit of joy to your holiday season. So if you liked what you heard, if you felt a little bit of that Christmas magic, it would mean the world to us if you shared this podcast with a friend or family member. Just let them know we exist, and you'll make our Christmas. We want to make a second season, and you can help us make that happen by spreading the word. You can also leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Hey Tinseltown. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Welcome to Tinseltown is a Triangle Content production. Our executive producer is Dave Kiney. We were written and directed by Adam Ganong and Jenna Noor, with music and audio production by Adam Ganong. Our cast includes Jenna Noor, 
Adam Ganong, Alex Ryu, Charisse Lebrun, Jean-Michel Clich, Kira Chisholm, Hannah Blizzard, and Jake Knorr, with additional voices by Dave Kiney, Daniel Ganong, Philip Hall, and Wayne Knorr. Alex Ryu was our script editor, with additional writing by Dave Kiney and additional music by Ken Miller. Special thanks to Dorothy Kiney, Wayne and Susan Knorr, and Adam Raymunda. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Thank you.